Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode, podcast of Real Life Discussion with Pastor Rodney Evans. We're going to continue talking about power gone sour. The last couple episodes, we were talking about flies in the ointment. We're going to go back a little bit on that and talk about it a little bit. But we're going to also talk about why you and I should protect our anointing. Each one of you have an anointing on your life. If you are a, as I'm from the Appalachian Mountains, if you're a coal miner, you're a school teacher, uh, whatever it may be, whatever your profession may be, you're anointed of God. Just like I'm called to minister the word and to pastor a church and, and et cetera. The anointing of God is upon me to do that. Just like the anointing of God is upon you. And we have to protect ourselves. From the flies, one fly can lay an egg and you have multiple flies eventually. Um, we told you in the last couple episodes that the death of cows has been contributed to flies. Humans have died because of flies, because especially back before we had antibiotics that we have now, people died of flies. So flies wasn't a nuisance. We use Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and 1 talking about the flies made the perfume to stink, uh, but also we can relate the perfume or the ointment to the anointing. And so that's kind of how we're going with this right now about you protecting the anointing of God in your life. In uh, Judges, go ahead and turn there. This has kind of been our text. Uh, we're going to read uh, six and seven. You can read five, six and seven. But we're looking at Judges about Samson and in Judges, basically, Israel failed to enjoy the peace and the prosperity that God had desired for them because they failed to walk in obedience of his divine purpose for their life. He had sent them to the promised land. He told them exactly what to do, and they failed to do that. And we then begin to see that Samuel... Uh, or Samson, excuse me, came along to help the deliverance in a sense. But here it says, and this is something God told them not to do. It says, and they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and they served their gods, little g. So the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and they forgot their Lord, their God, and served the Baals and the groves. And we told you that the Baals basically was the fertility uh God of Canaan. Also, the groves was, could be a totem pole. It could be um, a live tree with the top cut off and some image on top of it. It could be stone. Uh, anything along those natures was classified as groves. And that is what the children of Israel begin to serve. They begin to walk away from the Lord because they had done something that they were told not to do. A couple of things. Number one is that both drew, uh, got, rich, got rid of all the people in the land. Number two, they didn't supposed to take any of them to be their wives or give their sons, uh, well, excuse me, give their sons to be their wives or their daughters to be their husbands. They did not supposed to do that, but they did that. They done wicked in the sight of God. Now, there were some judges that did good uh, and they were prosperous. But Samson didn't listen and wasn't successful. Samson had a, a couple problems. Number one, he was self-centered and he had a big ego. He was the most gifted, but he used his gift for his own benefit. And so here you had someone that was anointed of God, called by God to help deliver the children of Israel out of their situation. But again, he was self-centered, had a big ego. And all of us can get in that shape sometimes. And that's the reason you and I have to give all of our, our credit of everything we have to God. I've not obtained anything I have in my own ability. Uh, I know that it's been obtained through faith and believing God for it. Uh, I walk in the anointing today because of God and through his son, Jesus. I do all those things because of him. Everything Tracy and I have in our life is because of of him, even our kids, it's because of him. And if you begin to get the ideal in the realization in your mind 
that God has blessed you and everything you've obtained is because of your relationship with him. We talked about fellowship a little bit a couple weeks ago when we were reading in, and make sure I get the scripture right for you. I believe it was in uh, John that talked about the fellowship, John, 1 John chapter 5. And you and I have got to have that fellowship. And during that time, we've got to guard the anointing. We can't allow the flies to get into the ointment or into our anointing because God wants to use us all. Every one of you that's listening to this, God wants to use you. And he wants to demonstrate the love that he has for his people through you. But also he wants you to give him the credit that he deserves. And this will help you from getting the ego. This will help you from being self-centered. If you give him the glory for everything you've got on a constant basis. So I need to guard my anointing. And some of the reasons you need to guard your anointing, and unless your anointing can be, uh, you might have to guard it and block off, block off relationships uh, with people. Uh, you may have to quit doing this or quit doing that uh, to make sure that you are protected. I was listening to a minister on TV the other day and he had got blessed with a used car, but new to him. And someone came to him and asked him how they got it. And he said, well, I got it through faith. And when we walked off, the, uh, the Lord just kind of quickened him. You didn't give me credit. You said you got it through faith. And that's, that's true, but you should have let him know that I blessed you with it. So we always need to give God the credit for everything that we have. Uh, the reason that you want to protect your anointing is in Psalms 23 and 5, it says, He anointeth my head with oil. So back in biblical times when someone was anointed a priest, they would pour the ointment or the oil from the top of their head and it would run down to that bottom of their garment onto the floor. It would go from one from the head all the way down to the feet. They would be saturated with the oil, with the anointing. And God desires for that to happen. So we don't want to see our anointed, our anointing uh, to be in jeopardy. And it's not a fragile thing, but we need to protect it. And because I always want to be prepared if, you know, if you're out shopping and someone needs prayer, you don't want to say, well, I got to go home, get prayed up, read up and fasted up and all this stuff. You want to be ready on the spare of the moment to do what God's called you to do. I shared this with the church. Um, when I first started preaching, uh, I went to visit a church. And while I was there, the pastor said, well, praise the Lord. It's good to have Pastor Rodney with us. He'll be our brother Rodney. I wouldn't pastor then. He said, uh, who administered me that? And I'm going, oh, no, I didn't bring anything. From that time forward, I've kind of stayed ready. But I want you to listen to this, these, some of these scriptures. Uh, Psalms 45 and 7, Hebrews 1 and 9 says, he anointed uh, anointed me with oil of gladness. The anointing brings gladness. That's another reason you want to protect your anointing. In everything that's going in your life, God can bring you joy. He can bring you peace for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Also, in Isaiah 61 and 3, it says, the oil of joy for mourning. That's a big one. So he can put the oil of joy on you for uh, morning, or if you're going through things, you need to do that. And we as a Christians, on a constant basis, we, we have to repent. None of us are perfect. We all have come short of the glory of God. We've all sinned, the Bible says. So we need to do Second Chronicles chapter 7 and, and 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and then I will forgive them, other, uh, forgive them of their sins, and I will heal their lands. He goes on and says, I'll hear them from heaven. So he says, I'll hear you from heaven, and I'll forgive your sins, and I'll heal your lands. But if my people, in other words, you're called by God, and we've got to ask God to forgive us. And it's got to start in the house of God. We all need to say, Lord, forgive us for what we have done, and we ask that you come in and you allow that anointing to just flow from me and become everything you want it to become. Um, in uh, Proverbs 14 and 12, it says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but at the end uh, is the way of death. Choose rather to suffer, Hebrews eleven twenty five. choose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy 
the pleasures of sin, and I say for a season, because eventually that's going to stop because you are going to be judged. We're all going to stand before the mercy seat of God and be judged. But what we need to do is ask for repentance. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse um, 8 says, but what's right I say, the words is nigh near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess, how you do confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, confess and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believe to righteous, with, conf- uh, with the mouth of the confession is made unto salvation. You got to believe it and you got to speak it. And I tell my church, that's how you got everything that you have right now. You got salvation. The main thing, you got it through believing and confessing. We've got to stand on what the word says and confess what the word says about us. Because to me, that's important. Now, I'm not going to turn over, but in 1 Kings chapter 17 and 8 through 16 talks about Elijah uh, multiplying the meal and the oil on a daily basis. Uh, Elijah went to the widow woman and she was getting ready to make a cake and do some things, the last supper basically, and was going to pass away. But he shows up and says, make it for me first. And could you see him there eating in front of him? And they're saying, well, are they going to... Is he going to share with us? He eats it and basically blesses them and their meal never runs out. Their oil never runs out and it continues. So you and I have got to begin to realize God wants you to guard your menorah and you don't know when you will need it. Now, again, I I said this and I I want you to understand, I'm just going over a little bit of what I talk about on a Sunday. Uh, This was a little bit of last Sunday's message. Uh, we went in so many di- different directions and brought so much things out. So if you live within the Concord and Cabarrus and the Charlotte area, come and visit us, visit us at Real Life and you'll be able to follow along and hook up with us on this. Um, I read uh, Judges chapter 13 and verse 5. It talks about uh, the mother of Samson was told to protect and not eat any grapes, in other words, take the Nazarite vow at that present time. And so she did. And Samson was born. Samson uh, was there to deliver the children of Israel, but he did not obey. And David had to finish it. Just keep in your mind. I want to make sure that when this life is over with, I stand for the Lord. He says, you finished exactly what I told you to finish. I didn't have to have someone go do that for you. That's a big thing. We need to make sure that we finish the course, that we've kept the faith. So I want to encourage you to do exactly what God told you to do. Now, Dan and Judah was the tribes that Samson would judge over. We'll talk about that in the weeks to come. If Samson would have obeyed and subdued the Philistines, David would not have to face Goliath. And we would not have that story, but we would have had probably a lot more stories from Samson. This is why Samson has such a uh, supernatural strength and gift. God's given you a gift. He's given you ability. Let's use it for the kingdom. That's the most important thing that I I want you to get right now. uh, Besides salvation is the most important, but God's given you ability and he's given you a gift. Let's use it for the kingdom of God. Let's not be like Samson was. Listen, we're going to pick this up next week uh, on Real Life Discussion with Pastor Rodney Evans and continue this series. Again, I'm just, as the old saying is, skimming the surface of what we talk about on Sunday morning. Hope you enjoy it. I'll see you next week on Real Life Discussion with Pastor Rodney.